Welcome to Orania, a remote farming town in South Africa's Northern Cape. It prints its own money, runs its own banks, has its own holidays and manages its own affairs. It sounds like the perfect township to relocate, right? Well, hold your horses. To enter Orania, you have to qualify on certain parameters. The foremost is the color of your skin. It has to be white, because Orania is a whites-only town. The uniqueness is too obvious to ignore. Wherever you go in this township, you will only find Afrikaners. White people with Dutch ancestry. They do all the work, from playing the piano at the church... ...to reading out the Bible to believers... ...to running the kitchen at a restaurant. Yeah, th then they've never had the keyboard being played from KZN. <laughs> if they hear the keyboard from KZN, they will change their mind. Now, that is the part there that I wanted to kind of note there. And so, they do everything for themselves. Uh, salute. Great. Uh, but it's the reason which they claim, Bible-wise. To even gardening at orchards. All jobs, big or small, are reserved for white people. But the residents of this town insist that they're not racist. We are from Africa, that's why we call ourselves Afrikaners. We want to remain here. We also want to retain our identity. Now, to retain one's identity is not a racist impulse. We wanted to retain our identity against the English. They actually did claim this, like, almost like it's from the religious background also, to say that even from a religious background, that's the note, that's the thing that they are taking. There was a, re that's, that's a reference for what was happening with Israel. So, is this the same thing? That was happening with Israel, if you actually think of it. And the answer is uh, no. <laughs> the answer is no, because for Israel's case, there was a reason for doing that. It was preserving the bloodline. It was preserving the bloodline for the coming of the Messiah. That's why there was need of separation for the Jewish people from the rest of the people. Your, your kids can interact with the same with the rest of the world. Because the world is no longer there, <laughs> okay? It used to be there might have been a place where you could do that and it's understandable in that period. But because your kids are not interacting with the rest of the world, should they decide to leave that particular space, they are not used to being opposed. They are not used to the radical climate in which the world is. Yeah. And by radical world uh, uh, that, that the world is right now, I mean uh, a space where you have people that just hate white people just for hating white people. <laughs> okay? And a place where white people just hate black people because of their skin or for whatever other reason. They are not getting themselves used to those kind of positions. And that's the only viewpoint they get to see. They only get to see people that agree with them. They, uh, they are denied interaction with the rest of the world that doesn't agree with them. Therefore, uh, their version of defense is that which you are giving them, but not, might not be the one that's actually happening in the world. The world is changing extremely fast. And because these kids, the kids that are growing in this type of a community, the kids that grow in this, in, in this environment, they're not seeing what's happening out there. They're not interacting with the world as it progresses. They're incapable of living in the world, in its true nature. You see, so the segregation that you guys are doing, or all that kind of stuff. I pity, that's why I say I pity people that live in a community like this, or with this type of a mindset, because... It hinders them from seeing where the world is going. Even though you say you do it for, uh, for the reasons of protecting your identity, you are losing your identity.
because your identity is in a world which isn't as uh, picking flowers <laughs> as you might actually look at it. Okay. Um, personally, I don't like an environment where there is noise. Personally. Why? Because I make videos and stuff like that. Kind of prefer my own, you understand? I live in a place which is noisy, but it just allows me to have the silence that I need. I live in the back of a building uh, where there is silence to the, to the road and whatnot and all that kind of stuff that leaves, that's, that's on the other side. And so I'm able to have the quiet and the silence and having the benefits of being in the city. And having the benefits of having access to the uh, food, what, everything is in access, right, right here. But if I wanted to, if I chose the silence and the quiet and all that, and not seeing the other benefits, I hinder myself from that access because of preference, of wanting to. Do you see what I mean? And so that's what I mean about this thing of uh, what these people are doing. I make sure my door is not open. I want nobody seeing inside my, my, uh, my, my living space. So I understand the boundaries. Do you get me? But it's living in that environment that allows me to know the boundaries of knowing uh, why I don't want a person to see my space or whatnot. Or, you see all, that, I, all those ideas, but I get that once I live in that environment. But because they choose not to live in it, trying to preserve their identity, they are losing, uh, they are losing something from not engaging with that society as it progresses. Because the rest of the world, it's not just, um, it's not really just uh, a South Africa where they have white people, either in rulership or whatnot or no it's not just really it's not just even about that it's about the rest of the world has completely moved on from those ideas and so they can't wake up now and go to another country which holds the same views as them they might actually find countries that actually are actually extremely against the very same ideas and so by not interacting with the rest of the world, what they are saying is that their kids are bound to that town. Their kids are bound to that small, to that small part of the world. Their kids are bound to that small stretch of land. It's like growing up only to find that the cookie monster that you, your, your, your parents were, were telling you is out there. And then you walk out and you find, oh, there is no cookie monster. It actually might turn you against the people that raised you because what they were trying to supposedly protect you from doesn't exist but when they when they live in that world and they see the progress they see what's happening they see they see the hatred they see the love they see the it allows them to adjust themselves to that world they themselves when they become individuals tomorrow they know what to do that's why personally i say i pity people like that uh, I'm, uh, personally, I'm not there to try and change their ways. Uh, you know, the way politics seeks to. You know, politics wants everybody to agree with what they agree with. Uh, personally, that's not my direction. Uh, personally, I share my values, and if people hold to the same values, then great. If they don't, it's okay. We split. I'm not gonna lose sleep because there's someone who doesn't agree with this, who doesn't agree with me. Uh, personally, that's why I say I pity them. Uh, I I'm not interested in becoming a politician so that I can restrict their view. No, 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 no. I'm not interested in that. I pity how restricted their lives are. You can go to a place like Dubai. Dubai is majority foreigners. Yeah. The the, the, the the people that are from that country are not the majority in the country. It's the it's a country of foreigners. It's made up, it's a made up idea of putting business uh, progression in one area, basically, kind of trying to combat what's happening in Israel, where they have all the technology, health system, whatnot, all that stuff. They're trying to build that in in Arabia over there and so what they for me what they're doing it's only resisting 
the inevitable. It's going to happen that your kids are going to go out and they might not want to come back to Arania because after seeing how the opportunities that are out there, the things that they, they get to, to find from other people, once they experience that, are you sure they're going to want to come back? Are you sure they're gonna to want to come back? But anyways, hey, to, to each man his own. If they if they if they see it beneficial to do that, y'all can tell me what your thoughts are on that one. But I just find it um, I pity people that that decide to live like that. I pity people who are racist. I pity people who separate themselves from other people because they only hold themselves from certain things. They will only realize later. Oh, I pity people that live like that. I wouldn't even argue with you. I'll just walk away from you. <laughs> it's not a situation I would even record. No, just walk away from. I would walk away because I pity you more than I care what you would be saying. Quotation that they can take from the Bible of separating themselves and make it look like it's religious, and it's actually not even religious at this point because for Israel it was there was a reason, as I stated. For Israel, there was a reason, and that reason was preservation of the bloodline. They preserved the bloodline for the coming of the Messiah. Okay? Bloodline had to stay clean, which is why the flood had to happen to wipe out those people, the, the, those demons that were trying to, to pollute the bloodline by sleeping with women in that period. And so theirs, they might take it from that, but it's flawed because uh, they don't understand the reason for why that was there in the Bible to begin with. But as I said, to each and every man, his own. It's Ricky's Reality Show. Y'all tell me what you think about this one. I thought it was an interesting one we have a conversation about. Because a lot of time people like to use that to say, yeah, they used the Bible. Um, when when Africans came to, to, to South Africa, they used or they, when they came to Africa, they used the Bible. And I wanted to show that uh, the particular reference of the verse that they're actually using, there was a reason for why it was used in the Bible. It doesn't apply to everybody. The same way when the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord has come upon me for he has anointed me to liberate the captives, uh, that verse applies to the Messiah. You can't take that verse and then make it apply to you. <laughs> 